I've been trying to get my hands on an iPod Classic, specifically the 6th gen silver version. What the hell? Oh, hell no, man. What the f These are very old devices, so it's a bit hard to find one in good condition for a good price, at least where I live. I had to return one I bought recently because it was corrupted and could not sync any songs onto it. So it got me thinking, why am I going through so much trouble trying to get this? Technically, it doesn't really make any sense. I would need to download and sync all of my music manually, and not to mention that I'd need to use wired headphones. Oh, hell no, man. But music is an important part of my life, as is for many others. It serves as a source of entertainment, shaping experiences, and providing a means for expression and inspiration. Over the last century, the ways in which we interact with music has changed dramatically. Record players allowed us to record and playback music, the Sony Walkman allowed us to take this around in our pockets. And now smartphones and streaming services means we can now access pretty much any song, any album, at any time instantly. It's become more convenient than ever before to listen to our favorite songs. So considering all of this, why does an iPod Classic still make sense in 2023? Well, because it looks and feels really f***ing cool. Let me explain. Let's rewind time for a bit. The iPod Classic journey begins on October 2001, when Steve Jobs unveils the very first iPod. There it is, right there. A small stainless steel device that featured a 5GB hard drive, a mechanical squirrel wheel, and a monochrome screen. It wasn't exactly the first of its kind, because MP3 players were already a thing even back then, like the personal jukebox, the Creative Labs Nomad, and Samsung's Yep line. But fortunately for Apple, these were all either big and clunky, or small and useless, and had really bad UI. Flash memory-based players had too little storage, and hard drive-based models, like the jukebox, was just too big and heavy to really be portable. This iPod being much smaller and arguably much prettier than all the other existing digital audio players first found success within the Macintosh community and continued to print cash for a very long time with the second generation, the third gen, the fourth gen, the fourth gen iPod photo, the fifth gen, otherwise known as the iPod video, and finally in 2007, the official iPod classic as the sixth generation. During these years, the iPod family expanded to include the Mini, Shuffle, Nano, and Touch, each with its own unique appeal. But as we know with the introduction of the iPhone in 2007, it kinda made the iPod obsolete. The iPhone gradually eliminated the need for a separate music player because, well, it could do everything an iPod could do and a whole lot more. So why does the iPod Classic still matter now? Well, technology is still constantly evolving, but I think there's a certain charm in having a portable, offline, and dedicated music player to listen to downloaded music through wired headphones. In a world with so much noise and social media bombardment, the idea of using a device that offers complete detachment is in a way sort of peaceful. It's definitely not the most efficient way of listening to music, but I think these drawbacks actually make it a big time benefit. Put an iPod Classic next to any modern device today, and it doesn't really look out of place. Featuring an anodized aluminium front plate and stainless steel back casing with rounded corners follows many of the industrial design trends today. It feels incredible in your hand. It's sleek, minimalistic, and lacks the sort of trendy features that were present in some of its competitors at the time. Of course, this still applies to the older versions as well. The design was truly a hit of its time. The click wheel is the most iconic feature, and remains as one of the most recognizable and user-friendly interfaces ever designed. Its intuitive, circular navigation and tactile feedback made browsing music so, so satisfying. And I swear, music sounds so much better because of it. There's something about scrolling to a song that you manually sync yourself that makes you appreciate the listening experience that much more. Personally, a lot of the magic of listening to music, to me, was lost as soon as streaming services became more popular. Having an unlimited access to every album and song made it feel sort of stale, and combined with the fact that you have to continue paying every month to keep these songs doesn't really make you feel like you own them. The true beauty of the iPod, or any classic digital music player, is that once the songs are loaded, they aren't gonna go anywhere. And you don't ever need to access the internet. 
Perhaps one of the main reasons why the iPod Classic is still relevant to this day is the capacity. Some of the 6th gen iPods can get up to 160GB of internal storage. That's probably all the storage you'll ever need in your lifetime to be honest with you. This is almost 40,000 songs you can fit, and I'm not sure if there are even 40,000 songs in existence. Bruh. This can also be expanded, but more on that later. Good battery would be an understatement for this thing. For all the time I had my iPod, it lasted a very long time. I'm talking several days on a full charge, which is crazy in this era of smartphones. They are absolute tanks. A lot of the ones you can find online are in good condition, which is also surprising for a device that's almost 15 to 20 years old. Okay, so whether or not you've agreed with anything up until now, it's clear that there is a collector's appeal to this iPod. The Classic is pretty much the only iPod with a bit of resale value, being one of the easiest iPods to modify with a great community of enthusiasts behind it. You can get a ton of interesting parts to fully customize your iPod into something truly unique. Want two terabytes of storage? Well, replace the hard drive. The color getting stale? Well, replace the front plate with a completely clear casing. Battery dying? Well, replace it with a high capacity battery. Online communities and forums dedicated to the iPod Classic modding scene is one of the many reasons why I believe the iPod Classic will live on forever. Now, I'm not saying you need an iPod in 2023. That much is clear. In fact, it's so incredibly inconvenient to use one. You need a whole separate as cable and iTunes on Windows is buggy as hell. So, let me go ahead and launch iTunes for Windows. Here we go. And so, let me just go play. And I'm not saying you need to cancel your Spotify subscription, but uh, maybe there is something to this iPod experience. It's a beautiful device. It looks and feels incredible and the listening experience makes it feel that much more immersive. The iPod Classic stands as a symbol of an era when music was the center of our lives, before being blasted by all the crap on social media. And I have a feeling that it will cement itself as a legendary device that will always be loved and used by many. If you like music and all things aesthetic, why not give it a go yourself? You might be surprised.